Elton John. The name around the world now is just muck. like an institution. Yes, muck. No, it's yeah, not no, muck. But, yes, well. Going right back to when you first started playing piano, what were your real ambitions at that stage? When you first started Well, I started playing, playing piano when I was like three or four, so I didn't really have any ambitions at that time. Only probably to be sort of like, maybe not to wet my nappy. But, um... <laughs> So there was always music in the house, and I remember my grandmother putting me on her knee and then collapsing because of the weight. So then you listen to rock and roll. Yes. Um, you want then to be part of that. Well, I didn't really know what I wanted to be because I mean I wasn't exactly the, the, a rock and roll looking person. I was sort of like Billy Bunter goes for frantic, you know. Um, that was what it was. I used to mind to Jerry Lewis records and things like that. I just enjoyed it. I loved, you know, I'd never heard a piano play like that before. I mean, those guys, Jerry Lewis at Richard and Fats Domino, play piano like nobody's ever heard before. And then there's been obviously other people who've influenced me since, like Liam Russell and Anna Toussaint and people like that. But those three guys, I mean, I'd never heard piano play like that. Mm. And so, and I used to sort of like, I went to see them live and everything, and I used to just like copy them and, and play at parties, how embarrassing. I was, I was the family fi uh, sort of feature, and I'll bring Reg along so she'll, you know, play the piano for half an hour, and I used to stand up and be horrible in my sort of like smart clothes and sing a whole lot of shaking going on and things like that. And all I wanted to do, the only thing I could think of maybe doing was to write songs and for other people. And Bernie and I were always hopeless at writing songs for other people. In fact, I've never written a song ever in my life that's been a hit by anybody else. Bernie is now without me, written the Jefferson Starship and the Heart record. Yeah. And, but I've never actually written it for anybody else at all. So I was always, when I was always been accused of being commercial, I was thought, well, come on, guys, you know. I've actually sat down and tried to write hits for people, and they've been, you know, absolutely useless. Well, Bernie and I have never co uh, collaborated on a song ever, you know. Um, no, I mean, I, the we've never been in the same room it seems at the same, the same. time. Yeah, it's always worked like that. I, 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 it's extraordinary how it works. Uh, but I don't question it anymore. Uh, it's, we've never ever been in the same room and written a song together. It's always been like that and it's always worked. And initially Bernie wasn't a songwriter anyway. He was like a lyric writer, just like maybe a poet or something like that, mm. whatever. And, the, and he just used to write like, like 12 lines of, sort of like lyrics. There were no verse forms or anything. And I became expert at you know, cutting things out and, and mm. shoving phrase, you know, being good on phrasing. And it's, it's something I thought about and I don't question about it, but it works and I don't know why. But it's, it's kind of magic. I think if we collaborated, we'd drive each other mad. When it comes to sort of like the second album and the third album... <laughs> She's gone mad. I'm at May 28, dear. No, no. So, no. <laughs> it's unbelievable. The third, how long is it? What's this for, dear? And are you... Uh, I'm ignoring all of that. Uh, we, you, you've toured through the 71, 72 <laughs> period. I mean, well, I mean, this is why I must do it. I mean, this is the only way I know how to do it. another 13 years to go. <laughs> no, you haven't. Uh, Just... 13 years. <laughs> God. Well, you have been around for a long time. I know. <laughs> that was herpes, but we don't have to talk about it. <laughs> You're up to the <laughs> Rocky Chateau, I know exactly where you right. are. Right, Rocky Chateau. No, 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 no. Yeah, Mad right. Men Across the Water. Well, we've gone back one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought we were wrong. Yeah, Mad Men Across the Water, yes, yes. Right. Mad Men Across the Water, be sensible. Honky Shadow took you in an, a new direction around the world. Yes. Yeah, well, it was the first album I ever recorded abroad, for example. <laughs> and. You know, it was so lovely to record in France, you say, because the French hated me. Um, no, it was the first album I recorded with the band, basically. I, for, 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 like, three albums, Gus had held out about having, not having Nigel and Dion on the albums, and then suddenly there was the four of us on an album. It was so enjoyable. And we were, the first time we'd recorded where we actually wrote, I would write, and they'd be sort of, like, playing, and it was like an instant hit factory. Bernie would be writing the lyrics, Maxime would be typing them. You were becoming a major name around the world, and you were becoming a, f a performer, and you also had an image. So how are you coping with all of that? And how did you approach that image? I didn't even think about it. I didn't think about the image which everybody criticised me for, like the, the clothes, you know, they said you didn't need to wear the clothes because the music is good. Um, but I was just living my teenage years during my 20s, you know, I didn't have much fun in my teenage years, and I'd, first time I'd had the chance to express myself, and boy, did I, you know? And, and I had just great fun, you know? I just, I thought the music stood up for itself and I was just, for the first time in my life, I was being able to wear high heel shoes and dresses and stand on top of the pianos and, you know, do things like that. I mean, when you look at my costumes, I got away with murder, but I had a ball. The, the depression in my career mostly been through personal things. Mm. I, have, I have had a personal life as well. Uh, God knows how, but I have. And those are the things that sort of 
I mean, my career, I, I find it a game. I love it. It's a constant game and a battle, and I love it. But, I mean, the, the personal thing is much harder to cope with. Did your sense of humour, which you've got a great sense of humour, get you through a lot? Oh, I see. But the people that I know got me through. Me. I'm uh, talking about you, though. Your oh, sense absolutely. Of humor, you've got to have a sense of humour. But, I mean, without the people around me. Yeah. Because, I mean, you, you'd be the most biggest monster of all time, and they all know me now, and they just leave me alone. I mean, if I, you know, I'm creating havoc, and they just say, oh, piss off, and they go down the pub. And they know you can't exist and be successful and enjoy it. I've enjoyed everything, and I'm very lucky to be 39 and still enjoying it and writing good songs and enjoy, enjoying it just as much as ever. And that's due to the well, people around me sharing things. You and Bernie writing one of the best songs you've done. You know, the greatest thing is if you, if you have success and you share it, and, and my people around me have been with me more from the word go, and we've mm -hmm. had our ups and downs, but they know me inside out. I can't get away with anything. You know when you're being an idiot and you're being unbearable. And sometimes, like Elvis, for example, he must have known he was being an idiot, but unfortunately nobody from the world goes said, you're being unbearable. And they, he just got away with it. But someone has to say initially, you're being it, right? Mm. And you know you are, and they, they know it. I mean, if I am obnoxious, which I can be, they just, just leave me alone. I, I, it's incredible the things that happen to me. I just, there was one incident when I played at Prince Andrews, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but this is quite funny. I've never said it in public before. When I played his 21st birthday so party and at Windsor Castle and mm. I danced with the Queen to Rock Around the Clock by Bill Haley in the comments, which, I mean, the odds against that when I was born. Uh, they segued from me and Princess Anne in, from going hound dog where I was present into Rock Around the Clock with the Queen. I mean, and we, we were just dancing and I thought, this is unbelievable. Mm. And it was great fun, but I mean, the odds, I mean, like, if you said, well, when I was born, the odds against me dancing to, with the Queen of England to Rock Around the Clock must have been staggering, right? Well, I used to write songs and never record them. Uh, and on this, when we've been doing this recent album, I've rec recorded seven, written 17 new songs and put them all on tape. And I just, I can't stop writing songs. And I honestly think that my songwriting is getting better because I'm much more picky and choosy now, whereas I let things, certain little things go if they weren't quite right. And I just can't stop. And it's, I, it's great. I mean, it's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no effort anymore. It just kind of pours out. Right. All these people that hate Elton John are going to be slutting, sitting there wrist and God knows he's not written another 17 songs. Good God. <laughs> Good God, dear idea. In life, you can, anybody who's got the ultimate uh, bit of talent, if they go for it, you know, they, anyone can yeah. go for broke and they can succeed. Ronald Reagan's president of America. And listen, I'm, a, I'm 39, 40, it's relatively young, and to, and, but I've made a lot of albums, done a lot of product, and I'm enjoying it more than I've ever done, so I'm so grateful for that.